frustration. It was everybody in the organization doing everything we can to put our players in a position to be successful, and are the players responding to that? It's never as good as it seems, and it's never as bad as it seems. You go to sleep thinking you played good, you watch tape, and you're sick to your stomach because there are a lot of areas that we need to improve on. Hello to the SEC. Into the secondary with another gear. Can't catch it. Heading to the end zone. Touchdown. You've got to be kidding me. How about that? Understand the intentions of who? The play caller. The play call. Two freshmen just hooked up. Boom. There are no quick fixes. Strong foundations last for many years to come. Damn. Welcome to the SEC Film Room. I'm David Green here in William Bryce Stadium in Columbia, South Carolina, fresh off their 24 to 21 victory over the Tennessee Volunteers. And joining me today in the film room is the head coach of the South Carolina Gamecocks, Coach Will Muschamp. And Coach, first of all, congratulations on the win. It was a fantastic game. Really proud of our players and, and how they performed in the game. Played extremely hard, played with great effort, and we finished. And that was really the challenging thing we talked about all week. When we're going to get in the fourth quarter, it's going to be a fourth quarter game. You got to go win the game and you got to finish. Coach well in the situations, which I think we did, and play well in those situations. Well, Coach, we got a lot to get to. Let's go ahead and check out these first half highlights. Let's go. Under the lights in Williams Bryce Stadium. In Columbia, South Carolina, you're watching the SEC on ESPN. And a raucous crowd on hand tonight for the 2016 edition of Tennessee against South Carolina. The Volunteers have won the last three in a row. Coach, talk about this atmosphere. Watching it on TV, uh, it seemed electric. It's, it's awesome. It's the most, just a positive atmosphere. Our players feed off of it. Uh, really, you know, they, we get energized and play different at home, and I wish it wasn't that way, but we do. Yeah. And you see here a big fourth down conversion by Jake. We got the sprint out and the rub route outside, and they lose relative contain off the backside. But he, he's made a lot of plays, with just, you know, heady plays with his legs, his arm. You see here a great throw down the sideline, and Debo Samuel goes one-handed catch. Uh, you know, ball put in a nice spot, and Debo goes and finishes. Well, a lot of 50-50 balls we won in the game. Yeah. There was a lot of pressure that they had dialed up in the game. We were in a lot of one-on-one -on -one situations. you got to credit our players for making some plays. You see Samuel there. He's saying, feed me, That's coach. Right. Feed we me did. the ball. We did. <laughs> Touchdown, coach. Starting off the game, take it right down there and score. you got a true freshman quarterback. And I can tell, just having played the position, He's a gutty kid, man. He is not a, he is not afraid of the moment. No, and, and that's he embraces it and the guys around him. The thing around him is that he's got a freshman running back standing by him. Right. He's got a freshman receiver he's throwing to. He's got two tight ends that are sophomores and haven't played a lot. So it's not like there's a wealth of experience sitting right. around him. So that 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 to me is, is is as impressive as anything. Should make for a fun next few years though, right? Well, that ain't no doubt. Well, coach, they take it back down the field and score, but he had the flag right there and uh and then, you know, come Coming right here, we're you know first and goal or third and goal right here. Well, we had a situation. We had a run through. I thought we could have gotten in there, but you know Jalen Hurd's a big back, big yeah. physical back, and it's tough. I and mean, they get that kind of surge with the, with the, they got a big offensive line. They do a nice job with the inside zone, so it was tough to get a stop there. Really good, really good five man pressure right here with John Walton. You know we always talk in terms of football being a one on one game with matchups, and you got to win your one on ones. Yeah. And John got in a situation on a one on one on a blocker and was able to win in that situation and finish on a very good quarterback. Coach, your defense is playing with so much confidence. Even from week one when we were here, mm -hmm. they're playing so fast right now. We are. They, I think the effort and the, the, the urgency, the energy that they play with, they feed off each other. It's been fun. We, we've had some success here and there. We, we need to play the run better, and we did the other night. But uh, I think a lot of it has to do with where we're playing. Right, we're feeding off our fans here at williams Bryce Stadium. And Coach, the best way to capitalize off a turnover Stick it in the end zone. RPO uh, doesn't like the run box. He gets the one-on-one -on -one matchup outside. Well-thrown ball. Good finish by Brian. It's good to see him fired up too, man. He <laughs> throw a throw a touchdown, man. No Celebrate doubt. a little bit. No doubt. You got a third down Damn situation. Too. Just got to finish right there. But you yeah. know he's a big physical back. He does a nice job running the ball. I thought we tackled pretty well for the most part in the game. Got another third and two here. Really defended the read option very good all night long. Well, that's a, something that was a staple for them. So you, so you got to have some change ups. You know, you really go back, David, it's really like defending the split back veer of the wishbone. 
Mm -hmm. when they veer you down on the line of scrimmage and they try and create some different things for you. And you've got to have change-ups for the quarterback as far as his reads are concerned. And our players did a really good job of executing. Well, Coach, talk about this, this fourth and two. They call the timeout. What, what do you do on the sidelines when you recognize formation? Well, do, do we want to change our look? Right. You know, we're in a four down look there. We did change the call. We stayed in a four down. We brought corner pressure and really zoned to the front side. They were expecting okay. man to man, yeah. uh, in my opinion, on the rub right there. So we brought edge pressure. Uh, he rolled to his left. Relative contain off the backside, Rashad Fenton, Darius English, Quay Lewis, fantastic job in pursuit of our players right there. And really nice coverage down the field. They ran what we call a wolf route, and uh, yeah. an out and a corner on top of it. And we were able to zone it off well. That's the fun thing I love about this game, Coach. It's that chess match. They call timeout. They're expecting man coverage. You come out in zone. That route that they ran, it's not good against zone. <laughs> But that's, gonna, that's what's fun, right? Well, we, we guessed right on you that. You guessed right on that one. <laughs> well, it's 14 to 7 to go in at half. Any adjustments you make at halftime? Really, or... you know, we really felt pretty good about we moved the ball. Right. Uh, we, had, you know, we had played pretty well defensively. We needed to keep him in the pocket. We mm -hmm. couldn't let his legs extend drives on third mm -hmm. down especially. That was something we talked to our defensive line about, really doing a good job of pushing the pocket and being unselfish because yeah. most of the defensive linemen, they love running up the field. Well, this isn't a game you need to do that. Right. You need to keep this guy contained, and uh, for the most part, we were able to do that. Starting the second half defensively, we needed to come out fast, and we were able to. You got a third down situation here, and again, really good job by our defensive line. Mm -hmm. You know, really of containing the quarterback Darius and, and Quay Lewis and uh, Dante Sawyer played his best game. So, did some nice things there as far as getting the, those things going. But this is a heck of a run by Rico. It's, I taught him to do that this week. You, know, you showed him that. Yeah, no didn't doubt. You? There's no. I used to running back in high school. And nobody knows that, but. Uh, no, he, he's a really good player. He runs through contact. He's got really good uh, balance and body control, uh, explosive with his cuts. Uh, very good football player, a guy we got to continue to get the football to. That's what you call good recruiting, Coach. That's, no That's doubt. good recruiting. No doubt. Third and six. Really big ball right here now. Stands in the pocket, throws the ball, delivers it 50 50. Guy's got to go make a play, and he does. And uh, had, um, I think, eight receptions on the day, and all of them were contested balls. Again, a critical third down, points mm, off, yeah. makes 53 stagger a little bit, enables us to get the first down. You're not coaching that. That's a player making a play. Well, yeah, and he made a lot of third down plays of the night. Absolutely, absolutely. Elliot Fry comes in here. We make it a two-score game, and uh, we, we lose momentum coming right here. We kick it off, and, and Barry returns it for a touchdown. They blocked it extremely well. Uh, did a really nice job on, of, of getting our guys. We've got to get better in our, our coverage units, but mm -hmm. he splits us right there, and, and we don't have anybody going to catch him. He, he runs extremely well. So, so that was frustrating, the fact that you've got the momentum of the game, yeah. crowd behind it, and then they come, and you got to face a little adversity, and you got to answer it. Yeah. I told our guys on the sideline, so what? Let's go play the next play. And uh, so that was uh, really pleased we were able to do that and answer right here defensively. And coach, you get to the fourth quarter, and I know you've been talking about this mentality of finishing. Finishing the fourth quarter, get that victory. You're up 17-14 right here. Well, three-point game, and of course, a huge break right here. They hit a run to about midfield, and uh, they got the ball knocked off the quarterback, some form of miscommunication. Mm -hmm. But we got a break, and you got to have those. And uh, But to come right here and be able to get some bull yardage with A.J. right there, he's got yep. fresh legs to continue to hit down there, and then we go to uh, the, the jail break and go. We hit UMass oh, for about eight or nine plays. This is a great dial up by Kurt Roper. Yeah. Um, you know, that's something we had, we had, we had repped and we didn't rep that, but, <laughs> but we had repped uh, the, the jail break a bunch and then we, we knew, knew we wanted to hit that at some point in the game. Really nice throw right here by Dobbs. They get the, the motion, yeah, we're in three deep and uh, we get a targeting uh, you know, foul there. And that's, that's a tough situation. It's a bang, bang play, uh, but we just gotta, we gotta get our target lower in that situation. They do a nice job on, off the throwback and they, they sneak the tight end through our hook defender in three deep. He's got a match just coming back through, so give Tennessee credit. That's a well-designed well, yeah. well designed play and a, and a good call. Uh, it's a 10-point game, eight minutes to go, seven minutes to go now. We just got to stay inside and really bang the receiver at the goal line. We played too deep right here and created some room for Jennings, who's a big target, and really he's got a big-time catch radius. Yeah. He can go get the football. And, and Tennessee, I mean, really all season long, they play better when their sense of urgency as well. Fake the jet sweep to Kelly. That's in trouble and it's picked off. Demarcus King with the interception. His second one. 
This is a huge play in the game right here, Coach. Big time play. We're in three deep zone. We don't reroute the seam very well. Jamarcus goes depth and divider in the third of the field. He's got great eyes on the ball. The ball hangs a little bit in the seam and, and just does a fan. That's a fantastic mm. break on the ball and, and, and a big time catch and huge momentum for our football team right here to be able to take the ball down to really, you know, 35 seconds in the game. We make them burn their timeouts. Yeah. Uh, right here is kind of we wanted to mirror Dobbs and still have somewhat of a four-man rush. Uh, make them. We knew no timeouts. Our our kids understood he's going to have to throw the ball to the sideline. Yeah. We rolled up here. Uh, they had an incomplete pass with five seconds to go. They attempted the field goal and uh, it came up a little short. Bet that place was rocking, wasn't it? It was an exciting time, and I'm glad for our fans and our players to be able to enjoy that. Well, coach, talk about the locker room after the game. Yeah, you know, what was the comments? What did you say to your team? Well, I really thank them for having the belief and confidence in us as a mm. staff. Because yeah. when you're two and four, you're getting beat up left and right. And in our society, everybody wants to blame somebody. It's got to be somebody's fault. So generally, right. it's our fault. <laughs> but that's fine. And 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 so they've continued to practice well, prepare well, have belief, have confidence in what we're doing offensively, defensively on special teams. And I saw that all along. And I just I thank them for for continuing to buy in. That's awesome. Well, Coach, we're going to take a quick break. And folks, don't go anywhere. We come back. Coach Muschamp and I are going to break down some key plays in the game. Man, Dowdle out on the loose. Oh, he hit him with the two-piece. I mean, that's a, there's not a lot of coaching involved in that. Man, that's just a good jump cut in the hole. I mean, that's a, that's a big-time big time play. Welcome back to the SEC Film Room and, and Coach's Tape. But before we do so, as you prepare for Tennessee, were there any tendencies or things that, uh, that you really want to attack against Tennessee? Well, there were some things we looked at as far as offensively. They had some tendencies with, with the, uh, 82 and 18 at tied in. They did a really good job of switching them up versus. They came yeah. in and ran the ball with 18 and threw the ball more with 82 in the game. Mm -hmm. So when you go into a game, it's, there's some things that you feel like as a coach uh, that you can count on, mm -hmm. you got to be careful what you tell your players because they take everything yeah. as an absolute. Well, if this guy's in the game, this is what they do. And so you you got to be very careful what you give the players throughout the week. And we try to condense tendencies to, to, to matter of facts. If, if I can mm -hmm. say always or never, I'm a, a, I'm a pretty thing. good coach. Well, yeah. I'm a good coach. I can <laughs> yeah. say this always happens or this never happens. Right. I don't like to say it's 70% and then the kid's looking at you and they don't do it. And it's like, well, I don't know now if the coach is telling me. <laughs> if, I, if, I can, if I can trust them. And plus, teams, you self-scout yourself, right? I mean, That's you right. look and figure out where your own and coming tendencies off, are. Coming off an open week, and they pressured a lot more than they had pressured in previous games. Right. Now, is that because of it's a freshman quarterback or some things they saw on film? That's what we've got to study on ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so, so again, they, they had changed up some things uh, as far as their pressure was concerned. They gave us some issues. Yeah. Well, let's check out a few of these plays. And, Coach, first offensive play of the game. We show an empty look right here, and we, we reload it back to a two-back look. You see a lot of defensive guys moving, and that's what we do it for to create a little confusion on the gap control. But really nice job our offensive line. We're pushing to the Mike backer there. You see Alan Knott, our center, come off on him. We get a really good double team on the three technique up top, and we're making secondary to players make tackles on, on Rico. And I love simple things like this, too. You get your slot guy down here. Just send him on a little bubble. Mm -hmm. Just to try to get, widen this guy right here as well. Absolutely. But your offensive line did a great job, like you said, this zone blocking, got, getting up to the second level. On the inside zone this year, we're averaging close to five yards a carry, which is really good. And it's our base run, whether it's a zone seal and we leave Hayden on the front side uh -huh. or we bring him across the formation. But it's a really nice job by Mason and Zach getting movement on the inside player. They slant, Corey Helms does a great job of facing the slant. Malik blocks out on the right end. Allen climbs up on the linebacker and we got ourselves a football play. Mm. That's a good play here, coach. We got a first and 10. We've talked about this freshman tailback. Inside zone play again. We're gonna seal the, we're gonna arc the backside <laughs> to read the end. And this is, this is uh, just- This is a play. A good football player. I mean, that's, uh, there's not a lot of coaching involved in that. We'll, uh, we'll show this from behind. Do a good job. They're getting all the guys here. He's got to yeah. make Kirkland miss. The, the big time. Well, if you rewind it there, you got Zach and Allen doing a really good job on the A-gap player of the double team. Mason's blocking out on the defensive end. All right, he comes underneath, so Mason just watched. The thing our offensive line has done much better as the year has gone on is sustaining blocks. Gotcha. Stay on people and let our backs make plays. And right here, this is a, just a good football player making a guy miss in space. Well, the thing you mentioned here, Coach, is 
the play is designed. You said 74 is kicking out. Yeah. These guys are scraping it. Play is designed to go here. Exactly. But as soon as he comes this way, it bounces. That's right. Man. And that's just a good jump cut in the hole. I mean, that's a, that's a big time, big time play. And how about Samuel? Unselfish. Yeah, I mean, that's, you know, the big explosive plays come, as you know, off blocking downfield. You got to get on the second level and block a guy, and, and our guys appreciate that down the field there. This is a, a zone read situation uh, that they really like, one of their base plays. And as I said earlier, playing a team like this is kind of like playing the old split back veer. Mm -hmm. You've got to change it up on the reads for the quarterback. So we're going to crash the end, and we're going to let him take the dive. Okay. And you're going to take T.J. Holloman, and we're going to rock him outside for the quarterback. Okay. But we're also going to have an alley defender in Steven Montag. So, you know, you got to have two guys assigned to Dobbs because one guy's probably going to miss, you know, miss a tackle. So the key, he's got the tailback. Holloman's got to get off. He can't get blocked. He by can't the get blocked. And what's going to happen here, okay. they're coached too now. So their left tackle is going to feel the, the squeeze of the end. He's yeah. going to try and reach up and get to Holloman. He knows what's happening. And really, we've got a triangle on the ball. Bryson Allen Williams inside out, Steven Montak on the edge, and T.J. Holloman at the point. I always say it's good to know what to do, but it's even better to know why you do it. No question. And that's a great example here. He knows he's got to stay inside. He's got to help outside. That's right. And to look at everybody running to the ball. And that's the other thing, Coach, when I watch your defense, man, they're playing with such intensity and, I mean, competitive. Hustle's a habit. You either do it or don't. We do that every day in practice. They don't run the ball, we blow the whistle, we do it again. And you know, mm. We don't believe in do it right, do it light. We do it right or do it again. <laughs> <laughs> this was a motion into quads. This has been a, a, something they had really worked backside to the X receiver here. We're just in base three deep zone, and Jamarcus King does a fantastic job. They actually have the perfect play on against this coverage. They do. This is where you want to attack the seams. Absolutely. What kills two deep and three deep is vertical stretch. Yeah. You can't get stress in the seams, and that's what we try to defend the middle of the field as best we can. We yeah. guessed a little bit on the backside. Again, here goes your tendencies. Yeah. I told them all week in a four-strong formation, they're going to shoot the ball to the X. Chaz Elder's a smart player. He's thinking, here comes the ball to the X. Here it comes. So there, there goes your tendencies right there. <laughs> and always or never are always good. That's right. Well, let's talk about the technique up top. He's obviously got his eyes on the quarterback mm -hmm. here. He's in a bail technique, and he wants to drift and, and, and really work to the top of the numbers. We feel like, you know, with the ball thrown on top, inside or outside, he can overlap and make plays on both of them in that situation. That's the third divider for him. That was another huge play, I guess. Fourth huge quarter. Play. you got to have it. A, now we're able to, to, to take the clock down to 35 seconds. So that's a huge play in the game. Coach, how do you take the momentum from this game and finish out the year? Reset and refocus. This game is not going to help us win or lose the rest of the year. Right. And so we need to reset and refocus. And our player, we've got a young, young team that needs to handle this in a mature way. And my whole thing mm -hmm. with our football team is reset and refocus. Awesome. Coach, Great good to see you, you as always. Right. Good luck the rest of the year. And, folks, don't go anywhere. We come back. Offensive coordinator Kurt Roper is going to join me right here in the film room to break down some of the offensive plays. Bentley, they fake, slant route, backside, caught the five, walking in, touchdown Carolina, touchdown Brian Edwards. Freshman to freshman, right? Freshman to freshman. I think these South Carolina fans are licking their chops a little bit. <laughs> Welcome back to the SEC Film Room, and joining me now is offensive coordinator Kurt Roper and coach. First of all, congratulations on the game. Now talk about your quarterback a little bit. Jay Bentley just played absolutely phenomenal. What has it been like trying to get a true freshman ready to play at quarterback? Well, it's not ever easy. There's so much that goes on, obviously, in a football game, and, and you face a lot of really, really talented defensive coordinators and in this league, and, and then obviously guys that can pass rush. So I think getting him to understand the speed of the game, how fast right. it's going to, how fast it's going to go, is the biggest challenge. And and I think he's done a, really a good job of that. He plays with really fast feet. He plays with good twitch. Yeah. He tries to make quick decisions, and, and he's done a good job taking care of the ball. Well, he's ultra co competitive. That's one thing for sure. And you can tell throughout this game making third down throw after third down throw played outstanding well coach let's go ahead and check out sure. a few of these plays this first one here is a is a first and ten and we're talking about these big plays you know they just threw an interception did they show any tendencies i mean what kind of coverage coverages were you thinking about here they jumped into a cover zero we had an rpo Jake did a great job of understanding what was happening to him on the on the run side of this right and and he had his answer so he realizes they're kind of overloaded over here. Sure. You got the run action. 
The only guy you're worried about is this underneath receiver when you got the, the slant up top. Correct. We felt like he was going to move in man-to-man -man with the back. They're yeah. in a zero pressure here, bringing double-edge pressure. So we felt like he was in man-to-man -man and thought that action would move him. But again, the best thing about it is is Jake's ability to to play fast, get oh. balanced the line, and, and get the ball out before the pressure can get to him. So as soon as you get this action, boom, he's pulling him with him. Sure. But look at this footwork here. Correct. That That's oh. the biggest thing is, is how fast twitch his lower body is and how he can eliminate his lower body in the passing game. Once he gets himself balanced in a line, his ability to not have to stride, yeah. and it's all happened with upper body twitch, fast arm, ball out, and accurate throw. Freshman to freshman, Freshman right? to freshman. I think these South Carolina fans are licking their chops <laughs> a little bit. Well, they're both really talented football players that are getting better each week they get to play. All right, Coach, this might be my favorite play call of the day right here. We got a second and seven. Were there any tendencies that you thought you would get a certain coverage uh, in this situation? Well, this was later in the game, but okay. but as the game obviously went on, second and long was a pressure down for them. They were doing it to try to get us to third and long okay. and yeah. make you know a young quarterback execute in a tough situation. Right. So we felt like we had a good protection uh, to handle any edge pressure that was taking place and expected edge pressure, and and you know so you sometimes you take a shot with a with a screen and go and think they were ro rotating to man and the strong safety dropped down and, and just lost uh, lost his man in this. He looked inside when that happened and, and now just got caught. And Coach, let's talk about matchups as well. You got big Barnett up top. Was that the only thing that kind of worried you a little bit? You know, going into the game, we, we felt like we had to use this protection to pick up field pressure for this play, yeah. which left our tight end man-to-man. -man. Now, going into this game, they were dropping nine a bunch into pass coverage on this, and, and that's not his, you yeah. know, the you best want him play. Rushing. Correct, correct. Well, Tennessee so they, wants him correct. rushing the quarterback. Right, and, and so obviously it left our tight end in a matchup right there, but, but Hayden did a great job, and this wasn't the only night, uh, the only play all night long where he ended up one on one, and, and he did a great job on Barnett all night. This is fun, Coach, because uh, you know you're thinking about the risk reward here. You're sure. thinking I got potential for a huge play here, but nobody in the stands is thinking that this is the guy that's got to make the pivotal block. That's huge, and uh, that's some unselfish play. And anytime you can get a tight end that can block Barnett, uh, he deserves a. Uh, I don't know, steak dinner or something, right? <laughs> He's a really talented football player, no doubt. Coach, we got a third and eight. I believe it's the fourth quarter here. And um, you got a kid with not a ton of experience who's playing lights out. How do you call plays? Uh, what, you know, nobody's got a lot, lacking that much experience. Well, I think you got to help them. You 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 got to call plays that they feel comfortable with. This is one of the plays that right. he feels really comfortable with calling. It's not something that is difficult for him, yeah. protection wise. And Tennessee was was a, a very heavy pressure team against us in this game. So mm -hmm. so we tried to take that off of him in this situation and let him just make decisions based on coverage on this down and distance. And and he did a great job. He saw rotation, worked where he needed to work, and you know he was just accurate with the throw. Chooses Edwards, which. Anytime you got a guy that's what six three, right. um, as we see on his throw, I think the ball location is perfect. Right. Throw it up. Let Correct. him let him go make a play. Correct. And and Brian did a great job versus press man of using throw by technique. The guy did a good job of of pressing him, but Brian was physical at the top of the route. Mm -hmm. Throws by gets body position, and and now you know that's why you like having big receivers. Coach, from being a quarterback and watching four play. I love the way he competes, or right. at least the way he competed Saturday night. I mean, you could tell he wasn't intimidated by the moment. Right. He seemed to uh, kind of thrive in these situations where everybody in the stadium knew he was passing. Right. Sure. Um, talk about him. I mean, you. I mean, you guys recruited him. Uh, he came in here. You've had. You've been with them all. Fall. What, what's about? What, tell me about his competitive makeup. Well, I think you know that's probably the first thing that you notice about him is is his competitive nature his mm. he is a fierce competitor he loves it he enjoys the moment he he goes to the practice field and brings that same energy you know I like to say football needs to be an energy game not an emotion game because mm. emotions can take you up and down and and I think he has the ability to do that he plays with great energy all the time but it's a great mindset it's a great focus and and I think you know that obviously you know leads over to other players on the team. And, and so yeah. I think right now that's probably his best attribute uh, that he has. He's just a competitor. Awesome. Well, Coach, good to see you as Thank always. You. Appreciate you joining me. Appreciate it.